All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Introduction to Facebook. Um, this webinar is part of CCIQ's Digital Learning Series and is brought to you in partnership with the Department of Tourism, Major Events, Small Business and the Commonwealth Games. My name is James Flaherty and I'm your facilitator for today. Alongside me, I'm delighted to welcome Paul Bebbington from the department who will be today's presenter. Welcome along, Paul. Thanks. Uh, as James mentioned, my name is Paul Bebbington. I'm a web content editor with the Department of Tourism, Major Events, Small Business and the Commonwealth Games, known as the TES. And my main role is to craft business-focused content and solutions for the business and industry portal. I've delivered a number of webinars on various topics, which includes business continuity planning, strengthening your business and the ABA and Ablers. Now just a few housekeeping issues to begin with. You'll notice over on the right hand side of your screen you'll see a panel. And there are a couple of functions on this panel that I'd like to direct your attention to. So if you could find the hand raising function and see if you can pop your hands up for us, that would be great. Great, that's <laughs> well done. And the other options that allow you to interact with us today are the questions panel and the chat function. So I do invite questions. And as we go through the webinar today, I'm sure you'll have many questions. So rather than interrupt the presentation with something we'll cover later, please either write down your questions with a pen and paper or pop them in the chat box and I'll answer them towards the end of the webinar. I may cover your questions during the presentation or it might be that many of you have similar questions. So we're going to group those together and maximise the time together we have today. Okay, so we'll be on air for about 45 minutes and the important thing to remember is following on from the session today, we will email out to everybody who has registered a copy of the presentation Paul will take you through, a recording of today's webinar and also a, an excellent workbook that's been developed um, by the department to accompany this, this session. So check your inboxes later on today or first thing tomorrow morning and um, the information that you see today will be waiting for you. As Paul said, don't forget to ask questions. Use the text box and we'll go through those at the end. So let's get started. Paul, over to you for an introduction to Facebook. Thanks, James. Today we'll be looking at what Facebook is and we'll be discovering how it can help your business. We'll be exploring the fundamental differences between a Facebook page and a business website. The second half of the webinar will include a quick step guide to get you started on Facebook, guidelines on what type of information to post and when to post, and guidelines for interacting with followers and then some quick do's and don'ts for Facebook. As we mentioned before, there will be some time for questions at the end of the webinar, so make sure you keep a notepad handy to jot down any questions you might have towards the end. This is just in case I end up answering your questions during the rest of the presentation. So what is Facebook? Facebook is in essence a social network for connecting people. It's for friends and family and co-workers and people with similar interests to connect across the globe. More importantly, it's free for users, it's easy, it's entertaining, accessible, and with the increasing number of mobile platforms and apps, it's becoming even more accessible. On the 31st of December 2013, Facebook had 1.23 billion active users worldwide. Does that statistic surprise anybody? I've heard the statistic that if Facebook were a country, it would be the third largest country in the world. But what does that mean for small businesses around the world? Well. When you have 1.23 billion people converging on one site, it doesn't take a genius to see the marketing opportunities it presents for your business. Now, most of you probably know the story of Facebook. It was founded in 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg at Harvard University in America. And the statistics since then have been amazing. It reached 1 million users in December 2004. It was open for anyone to join in September 2006. The like button was introduced in 2009. Facebook reached 500 million users in July 2010 and it reached 1 billion users in October 2012. As of the 31st December last year, Facebook has an average of 7 .5, oh, sorry, 757 million daily active users. The average user is spending somewhere between 6.5 and 8 hours per month on the site. With, five, with 250 million photos being uploaded every day, and 2.7 billion likes, comments and shares happening on the site, you really have to think about how you can cut through all of that when it comes to marketing your business. In January 2014, in Australia, there are about 13 million people using the site every month. There are slightly more females than males on the site. 25 to 35 year, 34 year olds are the largest group of users, followed by 18 to 24 year olds. But Facebook's not just the domain of teenagers, in fact, the stats show us that 65 to 100 year olds were the fastest growing group last year. 
So they're a small, there's a small, or well, they are a small percentage at the moment, and as you see on the graph, but they're growing rapidly. So does this surprise anyone? Just pop your hands up if you find that surprising. Has anybody got any ideas as to why this is? Why are the older demographic gravitating to Facebook? Just pop it in the chat there. Now I'm seeing suggestions like photos or if, you know, connecting with family, we're mobile. And you're right, there's more and more we're a mobile society. Now, most of you probably know the story. For most businesses, a website and Facebook have specific roles and both are important in building your brand. However, there are differences between the two. If you don't have a website, or maybe your website is a work in progress, then a Facebook business page can work very well in the interim for you. It's quick to set up, it allows two-way dialogue with customers, and you can show what, showcase your business very well. But you're limited with design, and you've got to stay within the restrictions of image size and style that Facebook gives you. There are a lot of rules and regulations about what you can put on your Facebook business page and how you can use it. But on the other hand, it's cheap, it can be free except for some design work, although you could do that yourself, and it's a great way to solicit feedback. Now, updating your Facebook page is also quick and easy. It should be used for any announcements where speed to market is imperative. A website doesn't usually have the ability for two-way dialogue. It's usually just about providing information to a customer. But there are no design restrictions. You can make it as visually appealing as you like, and you can add all sorts of online applications. But it can be costly. So you might like to think of it as a resource showcasing your business or products and services while aiming to convert sales. And then your Facebook business page becomes the interaction, the customer engagement, the feedback and the two-way dialogue, that kind of thing. Now, just um, jump through to the structure of Facebook here. Thank you very much. Now, I think this screen is one of the most important in the entire presentation. It's about the structure of Facebook. And if you go away with one thing from today's webinar, it is this, that if you are going to market on Facebook, you need to get the structure right. To use Facebook effectively for your business, you need a personal timeline. This is your personal membership where you connect with family and friends. But that, that personal membership then becomes the administrator of your business page. You can think of it as like a flyer for your business on Facebook. But it's an interactive flyer where you can interact with your business customers. There are also groups. Groups are where people with a common topic or interest can come together to discuss that topic. But it's important to note that if you do join a group, you'll be joining as your personal timeline. So as yourself, not as your business. And then we have events. Events are anything you can put a date to. It doesn't have to really be an event. It could be a new season launch or it could be a discount that you only offer between certain dates. To get started, it's relatively simple. But before you can set up a business page, you need to create a personal account. Can I just have a show of hands who has personal Facebook timeline already? Can you show me those? Okay, so probably a majority have. And, and who already has a Facebook business page? Let me look at this. Yep. Some have, some haven't. There's, there's a couple of I'm not sure there. So let's make it really clear for you. To create a personal account, you need to go to www.facebook.com and complete the simple form with your first name, surname and your email. You can then select your own password, and you also need to supply your date of birth. Now, the next step is to find friends. Depending on what email provider you choose, Facebook will ask you to allow it to import your contacts to find your friends that are already on Facebook. Now, click Save and Continue, or you can, you can just skip this step. This can be found on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Facebook will now ask you to enter some personal info like your school, employer, city, etc., that kind of thing. Enter where it applies to you, and on, on the right of each query, you'll see a drop-down menu with a globe icon. You can choose what information you wish to share with friends, the public, or even customise this. You can change this later in your account settings. Facebook will then ask you to share and choose your interests. You'll be shown some pages like news, musicians, celebrities, or your favourite bands, and click the like button on the ones you like and continue or skip this step. You'll now be allowed to choose a profile picture. You can either upload a picture from your computer or take a selfie using your webcam. Make sure your face is clear so friends can recognise you when you send them friend requests. As you'll see, at every step, Facebook gives you the opportunity to skip. You really need to think carefully about how visible do I want to be as an individual on Facebook and who am I personally going to connect with as friends. Consider the destiny of your data. So think about where could this information I'm sharing on Facebook end up and what can other people be doing with it. 
To set your privacy settings on face, a Facebook account, click on the lock symbol or the drop down menu in the top right hand corner of the window, and then click settings. From here you need to click on the timeline time and tagging option. And once there, you can control everything with regards to who gets posts and tag on your timeline, and also who can see it. And the best way to make your timeline private is to go through all seven options on offer and tailor them to your wishes. Activating timeline review is also recommended. Once you've done this, you should have a timeline that's only viewable to people who you want to look at it. The next step is making your timeline, or to making your timeline private, is to go to the privacy tab in the, pri in the settings page. And from here, it's very much the same process as above. Facebook offers you several different options so you can adjust exactly how private you want it to be. It's important to develop an understanding of Facebook privacy, your timeline and your, and your tagging. And you'll see under the general account settings that you can download a copy of your Facebook data. Now please don't do this during the webinar because if you've been on Facebook for more than a month, this will be a very large file. But I think it's important that, as there's a lot of information you might, you might have on Facebook now uh, that perhaps you know, includes you know, beautiful family photos or emails, connections, that kind of thing. And you don't really want to be leaving them on the site that somebody else owns or could drop, that could drop out at any time. So download your data once every few months and back it up. When you're getting started with your business page, there are a couple of things you need to consider. First and foremost, you really need to decide on the purpose of your Facebook page. What are you trying to achieve and what are you going to use your Facebook page for? You may have more than one purpose, but initially you should focus on one key objective. Are you just trying to get community feedback or reviews? Are you trying to get people to your website? Are you trying to get people to share images of your product or service or to check into your business? And when you've worked out the objectives, then you should be looking at the structure of the page and what you're going to put on it. You need to consider what tone and style of your Facebook page, what that should be, and how, you, how do you usually talk to people. And while it's important to make sure that your Facebook page is fun and engaging, you also need to remember to present your business in a way that's in line with your overall marketing strategy. And finally, you need to think about your content. What are you going to post? Who's going to post it and how often will your business post? And where are you going to find the content on a regular basis? Getting started is relatively easy. There are only really a few sections to a Facebook page. There's the cover photo, the large one at the top, which is 851 by 315 pixels. And this should be a representation of your business. There's a profile photo, which most of you will use as a logo because it sits beside every post on the page, that, that is every post on the Facebook page. And then there are a series of applications that sit off to the side. So how do you get one of these pages? A good resource for all Facebook image dimensions can be found at the web address that's on your screen at the bottom. You simply go to facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create.php and you'll bring up a page that looks very much like the one on your screen. Now you get to choose the type of page you want unless you're in the entertainment industry, a band, or you're a public figure, then you really need to forget about the two options at the bottom right. You also need to be cautious about creating a cause or community page. A community page is designed for a group of people that want to support a brand or business or an idea or theme, but you don't actually own it. So if your business page sets up as a community page, you don't own it, and at any stage Facebook can take the admin responsibility from you. That's in the fine print. So if you're a community-based organisation, you have rights to market that name, then you should set up under a company, organisation or institution as shown on the screen. If you're a local business or place and you want to drive traffic through a shop front to a given place or you want to allow people the ability to check into your business or shop front, then you should create a local business or place page. And If you don't fit into one of those two categories, you'll be over there in the brand and product category. There are a lot of rules and regulations that apply to Facebook pages. For example, what you can and can't put in the images they're all in the Facebook page guidelines and the link is on the screen. It's facebook.com forward slash page underscore guidelines dot php. So the one thing to remember is just like on your personal timeline, you don't share your page with friends or add anyone to your page until you're happy with it, how the page looks. Facebook will ask you to share it early on, so it's important to make sure it's ready to be looked at. Now, adding basic information about your business and your website, very importantly, if you do have a website, a link back to that website, that's vitally important. When you're setting up the page, you should be thinking about your customers, 
and what you need for them to like your business page. So ask yourself three questions from the perspective of your customer. Number one, why am I here? Number two, what's in it for me? If I'm a target customer, why should I even care about your business page? And thirdly, what do you want me to do next? Because if you won't tell me what to do next, I'm highly unlikely to do it. And remember, your customers can get great information about business from your website, so why should they go to your Facebook page? How will that information vary? And how are you going to use your Facebook page to make your business feel more accessible to your clients? Now that you're set up, it's time to launch your page and to start building a following. Invite your friends to like your business page. They should already be supporting you offline, so why not on Facebook too? Promote your page by inviting your friends to like the page, putting a link on your website, emailing your customers and contacts to let them know they can like your page. You might even offer a prize draw to encourage this. Using paid Facebook ads to target specific demographics. Writing your first wall post. Set the tone for the page. Say who you are and what you do and the purpose of your page. To create a custom URL, make sure you're logged into Facebook. Go to your page at the admin panel at the top of the page and select edit page and then update info from the drop down menu. Using a custom URL on your Facebook page has benefits for marketing your business and your Facebook page. It creates a unique URL or web address for your Facebook page and that website name will be facebook.com forward slash whatever you call it. So for instance ours is www.facebook.com forward slash business qldgov as you can see at the top of your screen. So if you can, use facebook.com forward slash your business name. If you find another business has already registered the URL, then consider putting something at the beginning or the end of your name or branding it by region. But you don't want to do that in a hurry. You need to think strategically about how it fits with the rest of your marketing. Sometimes businesses have multiple people update Facebook page. So you don't have to hand over your personal Facebook login details to allow people to do this. You can give other users access to the page as administrators and using their, fa their personal Facebook accounts. It's recommended you have more than one administrator on your Facebook page because if something happened to your personal timeline, maybe through no fault of your own or, or say you forget your password and you only have one administrator, you don't have access to the page. The flip side of course is that you need to consider carefully who you give an admin role to. To add other users, to log into Facebook and to go to your page, select Edit Page from the Admin Panel and select Admin Roles from the drop-down. From the Admin Page, you can add administrators by typing in their name or email address they use to log into Facebook. Once you've selected them, from the type of the role they'll have, click Save. Facebook will ask you to verify this with your Facebook password. You can also delete an admin from this page by clicking on the X next to their name and clicking Save. There are five different types of admin roles. There's manager, content creator, moderator, advertiser, and insights analyst. Or insights analyst sorry. The only person that should be a manager is the owner of the business. This way, disgruntled employees can't change or take away access to the Facebook page. Once you've got the page up and running, you need to promote it to the people you know. Just like when you open the doors to your business, I'm sure you told all your family and friends, you might even have invited them to an opening party. So now that you've got a Facebook page, launch it. Invite your Facebook friends to like it. Even though they might not be your ideal target customers, it will help your page to develop a track record and promote interaction and set the tone. Put a link on your website and put a link in all your other marketing materials. Promote it through other social media networks if you've got them. And email your customers and let them know to like your page. Even consider using some Facebook ads to target specific demographics. So if you're really trying to reach a new market or increase traffic to your website, you might want to use some paid methods and you may also wish to follow other pages in your industry. So what, what do you post? Photographs are definitely get the most interaction. If you've used Facebook yourself for any length of time, you know it's the photos that grab you. But of course it's really important that you're actually showcasing your business and demonstrating your expertise. So you need to consider information about your business, so share photos of processes like making a coffee if you own a cafe, but make sure the images or photos are relevant for your business and the products or services. Um, make sure you consider information about topics of interest to your customers, so you can include links to articles that relate to your industry. There might be newsletters that nurture interest, seminars that give customers the chance to learn as well as engage, and then FAQs and survey results to let customers know you care about what they want. Consider upcoming events. 
So engage your audience by offering exclusive access to content, promotions, giveaways, events, other offers, that kind of thing. It gets your customers involved in the production of content to build loyalty and community. And encourage interactions by asking questions or conducting polls. Ultimately, great content can call and convert prospects into customers. The other thing to consider is when you should post. This will largely depend on the type of business you have. So businesses sometimes post up to 11 times in 25, 24 hours. And that's mainly if customers are worldwide and there's a large portion of them who like to interact with the page and the content. There are some businesses that will have better results posting at certain times. So take that coffee shop example. If you want it to be on top, the top of mind for your customers in the morning, it would be a good idea to post while they're commuting to work. This way they can see the post on the way to work and they'll make sure they pass the coffee shop on the way. It's also important to make sure you don't pester your customers too much. So no one wants their news feed clogged up with businesses. We have to remember we're playing in their space and not the other way around. So we have to make sure posts are well thought out and it's about quality, not quantity. Now, online business entrepreneur Sarah Timmerman doesn't balk at opportunity. In 2007, when her parents offered her a choice between a gala 21st or a trip to Paris, she jumped straight on a plane, jetting off to her dream holiday and a rendezvous with her business destiny. As a young woman exploring France's retail delights, Sarah was struck by the unique shopping experiences on offer. She was especially impressed by the skill of Parisian sales staff and their dedication to creating what she termed a cool shopping experience. I wanted to do that in Brisbane, she said. I started looking for a shop space, but it was also expensive. And my friends suggested going online. Sarah saw a niche for an online shop that not only offered affordable fashion forward clothing and accessories, but the essence of a cool customer experience. And so Beginning Boutique, also known as BB, was born. Sarah says social media has played a valuable part in achieving brand recognition. And BB spends a lot of energy engaging, satisfying, and most importantly, listening to their customers. Sarah describes their Facebook schedule as intensive with 12 Facebook posts per day starting at 7.30 a.m. and wrapping up at 10 p.m. Sarah also says with Facebook we do 50% inspirational posts and 50% product posts. And business doesn't always have to be about selling a product. Her creed is that the business for social media should be fun and it's based on a carefully defined strategy. This has led BB right to the front of the online retail queue. With positive responses, you can either respond or not, and that one's up to you. You can thank them if you want, but a number of businesses just like, to, just like the comment. And the best thing to do with complaints is to be seen as trying to be helpful, but immediately taking the complaint off social media. So it's best to respond with a hi to their name. Sorry to hear you've experienced an issue with our product. We'd love to talk to you more about this and how we can fix it. If you could please send us an email at our email address, and we'll do our best to help. Sometimes people will just be will just be negative in response to posts. They'll add some things like, you know, your product sucks. <laughs> it can be a negative move for your brand to delete the posts. But many people see it as censorship. So you've got two choices. You can ignore the posts or respond with a standard message like, thank you for your feedback. We would like to discuss this further with you. If you could please send your contact details to our email address, then we'll contact you ASAP. It's unlikely most people will take the opportunity they'll most likely ignore your response. Your response is more so for the other people that will come along and see the negative response. Inappropriate responses, are uh, there any responses containing profanity or racism, sexism, anything people would take offence to. And uh, the good news is that if you've included guidelines on the use of inappropriate material or responses in the about section of your page, you can delete these posts. And the best thing to do here is to delete the comment and then comment on the thread reminding the community of the family-friendly nature of your page. And look, there's no negotiating with trolls. Some people just want to watch the world burn and they feed on causing trouble, drama or distress for others. So what might be best in those situations is to delete the posts in the first instance and then if the user is still causing trouble, you might have to block them from your Facebook page. Now, Facebook do's and don'ts. There's some things you need to remember when, when posting in particular. So do remember social media is a consumer environment. Consumers believe they own the space and they're often annoyed by brands that interrupt what they're doing. So be mindful of this if you interact with them. Do keep a consistent branding voice. You want to make sure you're sending the same message about your brand through the style and tone of your posts each and every time. Do focus on engagement and interaction with your audience. This is an important one. So make sure you focus on getting your followers to engage with you and create discussion. The more engaged they are with your brand, the stronger the relationship. So 
do remember to post content relevant to your business. Make sure you stay on topic, otherwise social media community will tell you you don't have the authority to comment on those topics. And you don't need to, you know, you don't need to post pictures of cute puppies every day if it's got nothing to do with your business. You might end up on the what they call the condescending corporate brand page sooner than you think if you do that kind of thing. Um, and the don'ts are don't be too authoritative. Remember, social media belongs to the consumer and they won't like it if you try to boss them around. Uh, don't focus too much on likes. And what I mean by this is likes aren't everything because if you, just because you have 20,000 likes, let's say, on your Facebook page, it doesn't mean these people are engaging with you or even actually like your business. And don't post off-topic status updates and jump on the political or controversial bandwagons. All you'll end up doing is alienating certain groups. So make sure you stick to what you know, which is your business. So in summary, we've covered a lot of ground. And the backup is going to be your workbook, which you can download from YouTube after the webinar. We've spoken about how to set up your Facebook timeline, how to amend your privacy and account settings to suit your business, and how to create friends lists to segment your friends into categories. Setting up your business page, if you don't already have one, is a simple process, but you need to be strategic about it. And you need to think about your naming and how it sits with your overall marketing and the images that you're going to use. Establish, a, establish your custom URL, sometimes known as a vanity URL or username, but choose that very carefully. Think about how that's going to look in your other marketing and if it's on brand. Once you've got the page up and you're happy, invite your friends, tell your networks, add it to all of your marketing, and maybe even have a page launch. And consider looking at some paid options to really start building the likes and the engagement. And then most importantly, it's no field of dreams. It's not if you build it, they'll come. It's more like if you build it and deliver great content and promote it really well, it will become an amazing resource for your business. Always remain polite and courteous when dealing with comments. I always say never use Facebook when you're sleep deprived or emotional. Anything that can make you a little quick, quick to react to things because the written word can be taken incorrectly. And remember the page is a representation of your business. As part of your social media policy, you should have terms and conditions on this Facebook page that say this is what the page is for, this is how we use it and this is what we will and won't tolerate on the page. So if anyone's doing something negative, you have the right to moderate that. But make sure you're thinking how it will re represent your business when you put anything in writing. Because once it's on the internet, it's there forever. And even if you delete it, it could be cached or stored somewhere else. And remember, Facebook should be fun. Facebook should give your business a face that's open, easy to relate to, and accessible. Thank you, James. Good stuff, Paul. Um, look, there's a lot of excellent insights and advice for our listeners there. Now, we've had questions flooding in over the course of the presentation, so we'll start, uh, we'll start going through those now. Um, the first question is, is, do you feel it's better to use your generic name or your business name for your Facebook page URL? So, a generic or business-specific name? Um, look, it's... Um I assume we're talking about your business Facebook page, so it would make more sense um, from my point of view to make it a, the business name. That would be uh, that would be the key thing. I mean, you may have, um, you know, you sort of have to separate in your mind a little bit. It's about how you're representing yourself to the world through the business. So uh, you want people to be able to orient themselves, and you're also going to be linking to it from a lot of your business um, your business website and through your marketing materials as well. So, um, you know, it depends how you present yourself to the customers, really. If you're known to certain people um, as, a per, you know, as an individual and that's the nature of your business, that might be why you would choose your own name. Um, but, you know, on, for the most part, it'll be your business name, I suggest. And I think Paul mentioned earlier, looking at if, the, if your name you want isn't available, look at how you can either tag something on the front of the end. And an example of that will be, uh, unfortunately for, for us, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Quebec, got to Facebook before we did. So if you go to CCIQ's page, it's facebook.com slash CCIQLD. So there are easy ways you can you can go about personalizing your 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 URL um, you know based on geography and whatever it may be. So the next next question in is from Elizabeth. Um, do you have to have a certain number of likes before you can personalize your Facebook URL? Uh, no no you don't have to have uh, a certain number of likes. You, you had to um, in the past have 25 fans to get a customised or personalised URL, uh, but that was removed a couple of years ago, so um, you don't need to worry about that, which is a good thing. Yeah, I think the only um, 
thing I remember at the moment is there's currently, I think, a, a number of likes you need before you can use Facebook's insights, but that's the only, only cap as far as we're aware of. Next question in is from Eleanor. So if you set up your Facebook page as the wrong type, can you change or do you have to start again to get your likers to re-like? Um, you can change the type or the category, but uh, you can only you can only change a business page if the if the name if there's fewer than 200 people liking the page. So it's it's something to get you know you want to get right at the start. <laughs> so it's worth considering and thinking about that when you look at the workbook, um, thinking through what what kind of page you'd want to set up as. And in terms of uh, managing your, your workload, because obviously social media can become fairly time consuming. Kerry wants to know whether or not you can schedule shared posts. Um, yes, yes, you can. You can write a post and schedule it to appear later. Uh, you can add a date and time in the future before you post it, and uh, you can also you can schedule up to six months in advance. Um, certain businesses also use uh, social media software or a kind of client software that you know allows them to do that kind of thing across a number of platforms, including Facebook. So uh, you know, it really depends on the scale you're operating from as to how you do it. I've had a, a question in around um, from from Gavin who runs a financial planning business and he's got clients who want to be his Facebook friend. So I guess that's his personal friend as opposed to the friend of the business. Um, what do you advise in in that situation, Paul? Oh, look, um, that, that's a bit, that's a decision for you, really. Um, it's about how close you want to get to your clients and and how far do you want them to come into your personal timeline. Uh, so it comes down to your own. Well, your personal wants and also your social media strategy and policy for your organisation. You need to think about the kind of things you're going to be sharing. Um, in some cases, it'll be against the rules and regulations of your industry to friend clients on a social media profile generally. So I encourage businesses, you know, more and more not to friend every client or potential client that comes in. Uh, it's probably worth uh, sending them over to your Facebook business page to connect. So you know, you want to keep that connection alive, but um, you know, share the right kinds of information. No problem. We've just got a, a couple more questions to, to go through, so I'll put a last call out now for any more questions. Um, for Paul, if you can get those into us using the text box, we'll be able to uh, to answer those for you as quickly as we as quickly as we can. Um, we've had a question in around um, what what happens if you make a mistake when you choose your your page name, and I think that's something that a lot of people have referred to today is this idea of getting their their Facebook URL um, correct. Can you um, can you change it? Um, or do you have to delete the page and, and start again? And that was from Trish. Uh, that's a great question. The, the page title, so the actual name at the top of the page, it could be different to the unique URL that I told you to set. Um, but the URL can never be changed once you set it, but the page name can be changed up to um, until 100 people like the page. Once that's happened, you're right, you, you can't change it. You've got two options. It's basically run with the one you have, create a URL and promote it really well, or, um, or you, can delete, um, you can delete the page and start a brand new page with the name you want on top. So bear in mind, if you already had the URL that you wanted and it goes with the old page, the only way you could possibly have that released is if there's a copyright infringement involved there. So you would have to send a message to Facebook, just search on copyright or trademark infringement to have that released and taken across to the new page. And then, of course, you also lose any of the likes that were there on the previous page as well. So a lot of people are hesitant to do that. Um, Angelica wants to know whether or not we've got any stats on the best time to post um, or when Facebook gets the most views and traffic. Um, look, it really depends on your audience or your target market, so when they'll be on Facebook. And that, that varies for each business type. And so the key is to understand your audience and to go from there, really. And I think that's all the look all the time we've got for for questions today. Um, thanks very much, Paul, and thank you to the Department of Tourism, Major Events, Small Business, and Commonwealth Games for providing the content for today's webinar and their involvement and support. Um, don't forget, at about two thirty today, we've got um, an advanced Facebook webinar. So if there this one's whetted your appetite. You've still got time to register for that one at cciq.com.au slash events. Um, failing that, we've got more digital learning series webinars coming up over the coming weeks, and they're all listed on the, on the website today. So thank you, Paul. Thank you to everyone who's joined us today. Um, don't forget to check your email 
later on today or tomorrow morning for all of the information that you've seen today along with links to the workbook, the video and also a survey that you can, uh, you can complete to give us some feedback uh, on the content that we've presented. Thank you very much and we hope to see you on a webinar in the very near future.